<laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I knew my theatrical training would come in for some use. Uh, welcome to University Centre Shrewsbury and the launch of Vibrant Shropshire, a cultural compact. Uh, my name, for those of you who don't know me, is Leslie Picton. I am the leader of Shropshire Council and in a former life, I was head of cultural services for Shrewsbury and for Shropshire. So frankly, tonight feels a bit like coming home. Um, and that's not my phone, is it? Please tell me that's not my phone. Uh, it does feel like coming home and I've seen so many familiar faces and some faces in the room that I haven't seen for years, which has been absolutely lovely. Um, before we start, I've got a few bits of housekeeping. Um, we are live streaming this event. So hello to those of you online. Um, and if you um, don't want to be recorded tonight, we actually have a roving cameraman somewhat um, and he will be recording the events later on so if you don't want to be on the camera please uh, tell Dan I would point out what Dan looks like but he's not in the room at the minute um, we are not due any fire alarms so if there are any alarms go off follow Paul the toilets can be found through the door on my left and I should have said this earlier but if you've got any really embarrassing ringtones on your mobile, please leave it switched on because we will all like a good laugh at that. Um, otherwise, just probably best turn them off because it will ruin the recording. And if you've got questions specifically about the cultural compact, can you keep those to the end? Because we're going to deal with those at the end of the session. Um, I do have notes. I'm also very grateful to my colleague here behind me. I will try to stick to my script because otherwise I'm going to make her life a nightmare. Um, so, why has Shropshire Council established Vibrant Shropshire, a, Shrop, a, a cultural compact? Let's not get hung up on the word compact. When I think compact, I think my mum's got one of those things that's got a powder puff, a mirror and powder in it. But actually, that's three things that are all in one little section. I also think about the word compacted. And actually, compacted means, does it not, tight together, tightly knit, type woven and in a sense that's what this is that's what vibrant Shropshire is it's like-minded individuals and organizations working really closely together let's not get hung up on the definition of culture either because culture is such a broad term and means very different things to different people but to us it's that unique blend of experience that gives a place a sense of spirit and identity so now you're going to ask me what makes place? Well, I would say it includes, and some of this tonight I'm going to read because I think it's really important. And in the next section, if I miss somebody out, I will probably be lynched. So what makes place? I would say that it includes arts and crafts, museums and heritage, history, archaeology, geology, architecture, open spaces, countryside recreation, sport, play, hospitality, visitor attractions, locally produced food and drink. Please don't shout at me if I've missed you out. It's a long list. And I'm sure that actually there's lots of things we could add to that. But culture is also about what makes it special, what makes us a community and what makes us individuals into a community. It can characterise our sense of self, our sense of place and also our sense of purpose. It's about what makes Shropshire special and it impacts on every aspect of our life. It strengthens the economy, it aids health and well-being, and it helps us to value and care for our environment. People are often really, really surprised about the depth, the variety and the quality of the events and cultural activities that are available in Shropshire. When undertaking the cultural strategy, the research confirmed at the time of writing, and bearing in mind this research was done in 2018, forgive me reading this, it confirmed that Shropshire Council area has 51 museums and heritage attractions, 400 sports facilities and leisure centres, 50 miles of canals, 3,600 miles of rights of way, an area of outstanding natural beauty that covers 23% of the county. We have 21 libraries. We have parts of two world heritage sites and we have outstanding food and drink producers and hospitality venues. And 
we have countless community organisations and groups that deliver amazing events in their own communities. We really recognise at Shropshire Council the value of culture, both in terms of its financial contribution to the economy and also its social value for our communities. Culture supports the local economy. Participants stay in local accommodation in hotels, Airbnbs, and Bs. Eating, they eat in cafes and restaurants and use local shops. Cultural practitioners earn their living from culture, but they also employ staff. They commission tradespeople, they commission professionals and other suppliers to operate their businesses. And again, in 2018, when the research was written, this equated to GVA of £432 million worth to the local economy. That's 7% of Shropshire's overall economy. It's huge. It was also estimated that culture and related sectors employ over 15,000 people. But beyond its financial contribution, culture, in my view, is what makes Shropshire an amazing place to live, work, study and invest in. We also know that the value of culture when it comes to our health and well-being of our residents is so important. We know that our mental health and well-being is in it's that moment when you go to the theatre and you forget where you are. It's that moment when you're in the cinema and you forget where you are. Le learning something different, learning a new skill, all those things really aid our mental health. And we know that libraries and museums and heritage attractions are not only great places to develop thinking, but actually they also offer the opportunity for people who may be isolated to meet up with others, learn new skills, do different things. And we know that sport and that physical activity really does impact on our mental health. And what we should also remember is that cultural venues are safe spaces. Everyone is welcome in cultural venues. There is no judgment. And we know that enjoying the countryside, you know, it's nothing nicer is there than getting out there and kicking through those autumn leaves. That really makes us feel so much better. So whether it's through social prescribing or formal creative health interventions, or actually just by finding it yourself, we know that culture makes a huge contribution to the health and well-being of our county. And it's an important tool for people not having to access social care support at the end of the day. However, we know that we live in difficult financial times, and I'm sure I don't need to tell you the challenging state of the council's finances is well documented. To put our finances in very simple terms, and I use this a lot, so for those of you who've heard me speak before, I apologise, but I think this sort of encapsulates it. For every £5 the council spends, we spend £4 on social care. That's either children's or adult services. The pound that's left is split immediately, 250p's, 150p immediately goes out to empty your bins. So everything else that the council does, and I mean everything else, comes from that 50p. So just off the top of your off the top of my head, planning, highways, environmental health, licensing, and so on and so on and so on, all comes out of that 50 pence. We should also be very mindful that councils have already made deep cuts to cultural services. And I, you know, Shropshire is not, not in that category. It absolutely has made cuts to its cultural services over the years. But many councils now are either doing it or contemplating what, in my view, is absolutely unthinkable. They are closing leisure centres, they are closing libraries, they're closing museums, they're closing theatres. Shropshire Council's spend on cultural services has remained relatively constant. I'm not going to look at Claire at this point, but it has remained relatively constant. In comparison to some of the other councils, we still do invest in culture. The massive building behind me is a very good example of that. Although what I should point out is that actually that building pretty much doesn't cost you anything at all because it almost washes its face. But we still do invest in culture and very often now some of the monies that are coming out for culture are not from that 50p they're actually from the four pound because one of the tasks that we have is to convince our health and social care colleagues that actually we can be the solution for them once we've achieved that and we're getting there 
But once we've achieved that, we then just have to convince the NHS. No pressure. However, as a council, we still have to make difficult financial decisions and find other ways to deliver strategies. We don't have large budgets for culture anymore, so we're constantly looking for different ways that we can support you in the sector. This is where cultural compacts come in. Silly word, but take my point. There are already about 40 of these across the UK, and you will hear about one that's actually quite close by a bit later on. We feel that the establishment of Vibrant Shropshire is absolutely the best option for us because in our view, it will allow us to support the delivery of the cultural strategy. It will encourage greater partnership working. It will attract funding for the sector. It will also support the sector to deliver amazing activities and even more amazing activities than you already deliver. But maybe perhaps most importantly, it will provide a really strong voice for the cultural sector in Shropshire at a local, regional and national level and make sure that culture is always included in strategic decisions. So I hope that this explains why we're going down this route. But before I disappear, because my time's almost up, I do want to say a few thank yous. Doesn't know about this. Um, I'd like to thank, because I won't be here at the end, so I'm going to do it in advance. I'd like to thank Paul, because Paul Gossage has taken this from a concept all the way through to this evening. I want to thank Alice. It's very convenient that you're all standing in a line. It's very, very helpful. Alice is our cultural compact officer, so she's been involved in putting tonight's um, event on, but also she's going to ensure the success of it going forward. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. Uh, to Arts Council England, thank you so much for funding uh, funding us to actually be able to set up the cultural compact um, to the board members of vibrant shropshire thank you so much because you're going to be right at the heart of it taking us on this exciting journey and to the university center of shrewsbury thank you for hosting tonight's event and last but absolutely not least thank you to paul so professor paul johnson is going to be the new chair or the chair not new chair the chair of the cultural compact and I'm going to allow Paul to speak in a moment but before I do because I don't know how many people know Paul so I'm going to give you a bit of a bio here. So Paul is Deputy Provost at the University of Chester and Professor of Theatre and Performance. Um, he has worked as a researcher, lecturer and external advisor at a number of universities developing and delivering courses in arts and cultures. Paul has worked in the theatre as a writer and director, as well as a variety of other roles from youth theatre worker to script reader for the literary department of the Birmingham Rep. Any of us that have worked in theatre know that we do an absolute myriad of jobs. Paul's previously sat on the strategic board of Arts Connect, the Arts Council Bridge Organisation for the West Midlands, ensuring that they met their aim of wider access to arts and culture for young people in the West Midlands and he currently chairs the Quality Assurance Agency review of the subject benchmark statement for dance, drama and performance. I am very grateful Paul for you taking on this challenge um, and enthused I have to say. Um, so I'm now going to hand over to him to talk more about Vibrant Shropshire. Thank you very much for coming ladies and gentlemen. It's great to see some good luck with you. Um, I feel I should have slipped a falsehood into the biog and you could have tried to guess what it then. Uh, thank you for that, Leslie. It's really great to hear a political leader talk with such kind of authority and conviction and knowledge about art and culture. That's really, uh, really fantastic. Um, the main thing I've been worried about is whether the technology is going to work and whether the live stream is going to work. Um, so. Uh, and so I'm aware that we've we've got the presenter view on there, but that's to make sure the people at home see the correct views, because otherwise I'm afraid it's all going to fall over. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, where the cultural compact has come from, what it's trying to do, um, and the priorities that we have for the cultural compact. Uh, so why a cultural compact? It wasn't a phrase I was particularly familiar with. Um, I think the idea is to provide a new kind of leadership that is beyond just the cultural organisations, just the local government, just the people who have been involved up until this point. It's trying to broaden out the leadership of local arts and culture uh, across all of the, the parties who might benefit from it in the local area. There isn't a single model for it because the way it's going to work in Birmingham 
is probably going to be quite different to the way it's going to work in Shropshire. And what's particularly important is that it will work across a range of different local sectors and interests and work in a way which is specific to that locality. So the way I think about it is the idea of the city of culture. Um, so it kind of builds on that. So it's not a, a one year event which comes and goes. It's trying to be sustainable and uh, and last longer than that. And also, I guess, how that works in a largely rural county is probably going to be different to how it would work in a in an urban area. So the way in which we engage with this work is probably going to be different in Shropshire to, you know, Birmingham, Coventry, wherever. So in uh, 2019, the Arts Council England and the Department of Culture, Media and Sport uh, supported the creation of 20 cultural compacts uh, with these aims. So connectivity between arts and culture and the broader, broader local aspirations and priorities, a shared ambition for what culture can do for local development. So this isn't supposed to be imposed by the Arts Council or imposed by Shropshire Council or imposed by uh, central government. This is an ambition which we, as the, the participants in Shropshire's arts and culture, uh, that we develop for what we can, what arts and culture can do for local development. So it should uh, strengthen local ecosystems. It should leverage resources to get best value from very, very, uh, in very challenging financial circumstances. And I think also it's a it's a bond. It's a saying we're going to work together to to achieve these things. We are committed to working with each other. So for these initial um, twenty cultural compacts, they they did quite a lot of consultation. They developed their structures, governance. Uh, they started to build build some partners partnerships, and they also did do a bit of delivery. But I don't know if you want to cast your mind back to early twenty twenty. There were a few uh, inhibiting factors, we'll call them, which really prevented them from doing, I think, everything that they intended to do. Um, they did some external evaluation of those, um, despite the pandemic, looked at what had worked, what hadn't worked. And there were some key kind of points of learning that came out of those early cultural compacts. So the need for a strategic, broad-based approach to cultural, cultural leadership. You can't have one organisation, you can't have one uh, sector, one art form taking the lead on this you've got to come together if you're going to try to achieve anything. I think all of the cultural compacts found uh, addressing issues around diversity and inclusion difficult. They made limited progress with that. And also getting engagement outside of the arts and cultural sectors was difficult for people. And remember, that's the kind of starting point. You've got to engage outside of the arts and cultural sectors. Um, the cultural compacts being independent was seen as being really important and having autonomy. So Shropshire Council has facilitated the vibrant Shropshire strategy. They facilitated the setting up of the compact. But what is really important now is that the compact, you know, moves away from them, stands on its own two feet, develops its own its autonomy. Um, investment is important. Having some money to do things does matter. But all of the other things that go around that, particularly if the investment isn't as much as you want or need, all of the things that go around that is just as important. Uh, and finally, the Arts Council itself can become uh, a really helpful part of this. So the relationship with the Arts Council enables things to happen that couldn't otherwise happen. Um, so Vibrant Shropshire Cultural Compact. We have talked for a while about what the name should be. We did put it to a vote of the members. If anyone doesn't like it, I'm not sure we're reopening that discussion, I'm afraid. Um, so uh, we thought it had to have Shropshire in it. Vibrant Shropshire is the name of the strategy and Cultural Compact is the term that's used across the sector. So we thought we'd use all of the words and call it Vibrant Shropshire Cultural Compact. So uh, there was a open application process for board members, which um, Paul uh, went out, did um, lots of communication around that, talked to lots of people and um, and a board was formed. And we've got a number of board members here uh, that I'm smiling at in a menacing way. So I wonder if the, if the board members who are here could just stand up so people can see you. So if they do want to talk about the name afterwards, they can come and not talk to me about it. Um, so do people just very quickly want to go around and just say who, who they are? I'll tip the edge on his Tim Russell. Pete Wise. Campbell. 
Perfect. Great. Thank you very much. Um, I'll be formally thanking you on, I think, two slides time, but I won't I won't spoil that surprise. Um, so there's been quite a lot of work which is taking place since then. So we've been talking about the governance, we've been talking about the priorities, we've been putting together a funding scheme, and we've been starting the work on communication, hence the, um, the logo that you can see in the corner of these slides. Um, and what's really important is that all of the activity is aligned both with the vibrant Shropshire plan and the evaluations that took place of those earlier cultural compacts. So we're trying to learn from what's happened before, and we're trying to achieve the things that uh, the sector came together to say were important for Shropshire in that vibrant Shropshire plan. So these are the priorities that uh, we have come up with. So um, they're on they're on the website. It's um, uh, they're on all the kind of funding documents as well. But I'll just quickly go through them. So. Supporting the development of innovative, ambitious and surprising programming. So we're not going to be in a position to commission that, but we are hopeful that we can support people who want, uh, who need help in doing that. Help overcome barriers to participation in culture, especially amongst underserved communities. Um, and there are lots of different barriers to participation and we are open to uh, to addressing all of them and the you know the ones that you think you can help address support the cultural sector to help develop Shropshire's economy so we, we heard at the start about you know the importance of the relationship between culture cultural activity and economic activity and, and that's absolutely true in Shropshire um, increase employment opportunities in culture and encourage more young people to consider a career in culture in Shropshire uh, increase the delivery of cultural initiatives that have a positive impact on health and well-being. So we're trying to work cross sector. So creative health is a huge growth area and Shropshire is quite a leader in that. Um, increase awareness of environmental sustainability and reduce the sector's impact on the environment. So that's both in the, the content of arts and cultural work and the way in which arts and cultural work is made. And finally, to engage more children and young people in cultural activities. Um, and these obviously aren't, aren't sort of considered in isolation. We wouldn't expect everything we do to address all of those. Um, but I think, you know, for example, we would always want people to be thinking about how we address barriers to participation. So the cultural compact, as I said, is not going to be able to deliver these things. We you know, we, the cultural compact, as we are, cannot do that. What the intention for a compact is, it helps to facilitate uh, everybody who can play a part, the, you know, the engagement of everyone who can play a part in delivering on those priorities. So the board members have done a huge amount of work already, and, and we are massively grateful for them giving up their time, giving up their expertise and, um, and helping us to get to where we are and for the help they're going to continue to give us over the uh, I think they can serve for a maximum of nine years so you know up to nine years um, so we, you know we're really really grateful for the board members and, and what we now need to do is we need to tap into the expertise that you have we need to tap into your networks we need to to build those um, connections we need to work with people across Shropshire to deliver the strategy which was developed by the the arts and cultural sector in Shropshire so I think that's all I have to say. We are. Get, I mean, you pro you may have questions now about what I have said. You'll probably have questions about um, things like the funding we're going to be delivering and and how to be involved. The final part of this evening, we'll talk about those really kind of concrete details and practicalities. Um, and also, if you've got any other questions about the intentions for the compact, etc., then we can pick those up uh, when we have questions at the end, if that's okay. So. Uh, I'm now going to hand over to um, Nick Millington. Uh, I'm going to read you some of his biographical details as well. This is the very, very abridged version, I've been told. Uh, so Nick is founder and CEO of Rural Media, which is an award-winning media education, production and cultural development charity based in Hereford. Uh, the charity works locally and nationally with communities, schools, universities, public and voluntary sector organisations, to create high impact creative digital content and skills and talent development training for those seeking to work in creative industries. Nick's also a director of Rural Media's sister film and TV company, Rural Studios, who produce innovative content for national broadcasters, NGOs and service providers. 
He's co-founder and chair of Herefordshire's Cultural Compact, which is why we've brought him out tonight. Um, Herefordshire Cultural Partnership, a fellow of the Royal Society of Arts. He holds the British Film Institute's Paddy Warnold Award for Innovation and Media Education and the Herefordshire Diamond Day 2012 Award for Excellence in Business. And we're very pleased to have you here tonight, Nick. Good. Uh, thank you, Paul. That's great. Evening. Hello. Um, right. First thing. Um, change this. OK. I was saying to a colleague here, my wife says now that uh, I only run a media company and I can hardly turn the TV on. <laughs> um, uh, a fantastic turnout. Uh, really, really, really great. Um, of course, I'm in the back of my mind, I'm also thinking down the road and the A49 is whether or not Herefordshire could attract this uh, quite this um, uh, level of interest at the outset, but um, uh, it's fantastic. Uh, and from the few people I've spoken to, uh, very much uh, cross sector as well. So it's really good. Um, I will have to put my glasses on. I can't read my own notes. Um, uh, Herbert uh, um, uh, Cultural Partnership, the beginning of it. Um, I, I, I think the the well, the actual beginning was uh, um, when uh, um, a group of us got together uh, uh, to uh, thought that we would have a go. Don't laugh. Uh, have a go at uh, Hereford becoming uh, a UK city of culture. Um, figs might fly. Um, we lost out just to Coventry. Um, although for all of us, it's worth keeping an eye on uh, um, 28, is it, I think? Uh, because I think the pendulum is shifting slightly towards more interest in smaller cities. Aside from Hereford, which was valued very highly, I noticed and David's did very well in the bid as well. Um, but uh, we conducted a series of uh, um, uh, public consultations at all of our um, uh, market towns. And although that uh, that uh, initiative didn't pro progress. We were so impressed with the level of responses from uh, from the city, but also to the market towns in Herefordshire, uh, that we held that group together, um, and, and in effect formed the partnership. And uh, and as has been referred as well, uh, Arts Council came in on that. Uh, Rural Media itself is a national portfolio organisation, uh, and uh, got very uh, um, um, supportive of of the partnership. Um, I was uh, I was also interested in um, uh, uh, Leslie's point about compacts as well. Um, it flicks me back to 1950s and my mum and all of that. But um, I think we are probably going to keep the uh, term partnership uh, in the uh, uh, although when we're talking to the Arts Council, uh, we of course talk about compacts as well. But the partnership is absolutely key uh, to this. Um, the, re the reason being is that for many years, um, certainly in, in Herefordshire, um, the local authority, Herefordshire Council, um, would uh, uh, bring together um, all the sort of arts and cultural organisations um, to, uh, to network. Uh, sometimes they were, for a year or two, they would be called cultural consortia or consortium and so on. But what happened there and what was became very clear is that everyone was relying on the local authority to lead that. And at the point, Herefordshire Council actually had rather a lot of arts officers. And they're struggling now, of course, like many local authorities. But then there were, you know, quite a cohort of, of arts and uh, cultural um, officers. And they would uh, bring us all together. Uh, um, and then everyone would go away and not really do anything. Um, uh, and look to the local authority to lead again on this. Uh, and that uh, really uh, was a, a, you know, a frustration for many of those organisations that are throwing their lives and their, and their backgrounds and professions into the culture. So in many ways, the partnership um, uh, sort of has keeps that in mind. And now Herefordshire Council is a member 
uh, of course, of the board um, and plays a very much of an equal part. Of course, they will be uh, different in the sense that they have uh, got strategic uh, roles and so on. But in many ways, the independence, and I think the last presentation pointed to the importance of the independence of, uh, of this partnership as well. Um, so that was, um, in a way, the, the beginning. Um, we then constituted uh, the uh, partnership uh, as a company limited by guarantee. That was very important because immediately that we were able then as a consortium to begin to um, uh, uh, apply for funding as an in independent, uh, where, which was uh, in partnership with, again, with the local authority, but the local authority itself could not actually have uh, applied or been eligible for that investment. Uh, and that has become uh, very, very important. Um, the, uh, um, uh, and then I think it will come up, possibly, I'm sure it will come up in conversations, if not this evening, certainly will. It will be around capacity. It's very well to bring these groups together and so on, uh, but to progress them, actually the capacity, and I look to, at the moment, to uh, people such as Alice and so on, um, uh, you think you might be um, overworked now. You wait um, for a uh, while. Well, um, if there is the, capaci the capacity or the resource to fund that, it is absolutely crucial, because everybody is coming together with uh, very busy lives and many other uh, projects. Um, if I could just, uh, do I just, here we go. Okay, oh, I've got that one. Let's um, uh, move on. Okay, wow, got it. Um, so um, just gives you an idea. I think there are 12, I think there's a couple missing off there. I think um, I think there's uh, Heritage's Free Choirs Festival is uh, also around the table. But you will notice that the organisations around at the table at the moment are essentially arts and cultural organizations um, and uh, not the wider cultural sector that uh, Vibrant Culture is proposing. Um, and uh, I would say that uh, Heritage Council, and we'll come back to Heritage Council because of course we've had a change of leadership and so on in, in the last couple of months there as well. But um, uh, there is a uh, um, a discussion going on as to whether or not um, the cultural compact, the cultural partnership should actually bring um, all of the other cultural sector organisations in, um, you know, uh, sports, um, leisure, uh, um, parks and so on. Also, um, the uh, uh, new artisanal food sector, which is growing very rapidly as well. Um, uh, and it's a very fair point. I think if um, if Vibrant Shropshire um, starts out like that, one of the things I would say is try to um, work in some sort of uh, subgroups or working groups so you can retain um, retain some of those close links and understanding of those separate sectors, uh, but also to um, uh, to then uh, commit to working in partnership again as well because it's a huge brief otherwise. Um, the uh, Let's just uh, go around to the next one. So, um, just, uh, some of those kind of key uh, uh, key characteristics: um, uh, quarterly hybrid meetings. Um, the uh, we've got a board meeting uh, tomorrow. Uh, those meetings rotate around different venues and different organisations. Actually, tomorrow's is at Perth County Council's uh, offices. Um, uh, cross sector membership. I think that's a slight. Um, uh, a, a slight uh, misprint there in the sense that I think we do, I do want to talk and mention about cross-sector working. Um, this is an ambition for all of the, uh, uh, and as um, laid out in some of the Arts Council's documentation, is an ambition, but it's easier said than done. Um, and uh, we'll just touch on that in a little while. Um, I've mentioned about Heritage Council um, being there. I think tomorrow there will be two there will be two uh, senior officers, one with um, an arts uh, and funding brief and another with um, uh, heritage and libraries uh, brief specifically. Um, the, uh, uh, the cultural partnership also is represented on uh, the county's Herefordshire's uh, business board as well, which is um, absolutely uh, critical um, voice on that panel as well. Um, uh, it supports many other networks as well, um, and uh, 
just referenced Hereford Heard is really a talent is really a talent development uh, program or not program but a network of young people who are looking for uh, to start enterprises or creative enterprises uh, and uh, would need some support and so on. You can imagine at the moment so many young people in Herefordshire are saying, well, give us an empty shop for six months and we'll show you what we can do. A little bit more to it than that, but the idea is that many of the creative organisations and cultural organisations can offer support to get those young people uh, started. And obviously the hope is that they will be able to retain that talent in this county. Herefordshire, like many rural counties, actually hemorrhages uh, young talent uh, um, and uh, we're trying to address that um, in a variety of ways. Um, uh, there's, um, I know this as education is represented here, but there's an arts council, um, uh, uh, creative uh, sort of a, a, a LSEP in the county. Do you, is, is there an LSEP in Herefordshire? In Shropshire. In, uh, Shropshire, in Shropshire. Um, I, I mean, take off Will be there. Okay. So again, um, we're looking at the ways in which uh, we support the LSEP in Herefordshire, but we're looking at what that relationship is within the partnership. Uh, at the moment, the LSEP is um, um, managed and supported by Herefordshire College of Arts, but again, trying to bring those really working well together. Um, you've mentioned about the 40, um, uh, 40 uh, compacts in the area. That's growing. I see the Arts Council are just uh, uh, looking to invest in 10 or 12 others that are to moving forward as well. Um, the um, strategic role as well. Um, I just thought to sort of point out a few a few things here. The um, uh, so the Shire is uh, the culture website for um, uh, for the partnership. Um, again, um, crucially, capacity is is a huge issue. Uh, there's nothing worse, as probably with many of us know, of a website that just sort of malingers there or is way out of date all the time. Uh, so if you're going to actually do, um, set up a, a, a culture site for a county, then uh, really trying to um, uh, get to grips with the, with the uh, capacity required. That's both content and editorial as well as some tech. Um, the um, the other the other side of the Shire set out um, really to not as a what's on particularly. I think Shropshire has a very good uh, stat and has a very good uh, information network about opportunities. So on. this was really about trying to actually um, go into some depth with certain um, projects or certain programs and cultural programs and develop some de some debate and some discourse about what the importance and the meaning of um, those projects were and those programs were to a variety of stakeholders. So it's trying to just push a little bit more into the um, meaning of culture, um, which is still for many people uh, really, a um, you know, a, a, a very vague term. Um, the um, the uh, the other um, side of this was uh, uh, crucially was the uh, uh, role, or, well, the leadership and the role that uh, uh, the cultural partnership played on the cultural strategy. Um, and I think some colleagues came down to the launch of that ages ago. Um, it was um, so. It, at the moment, is 2019 to 29. Uh, it is due a review early in 24, um, and I'm very pleased to say that Heritage has committed some of its uh, SPF funding to uh, again to look at uh, to do some research and a research study on the cultural sector in the county. The challenge that so many of us rural counties have is that so many creatives are um, sole traders or micro businesses. And that means that they go under the wire of many of the um, data uh, gatherers and data sets. Um, the, uh, um, many of the ceramicists or the fashion designers or whoever they are, 
um, um, are not going to register with uh, as a company. They're probably not going to register with the Chamber of Commerce and so on. So actually it involves quite a lot of legwork um, and research to really get a sense of um, the scale of that in a county and a very rural county. Um, and I'm, as I say, I'm very pleased that, um, that there's going to be some funding. I think there's a, cons a, cons a consultation or an inv invitation to tender for uh, that research uh, at the moment out there. Um, but the, 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 this was really formative uh, for the last administration. Um, uh, Vision and priorities uh, echo uh, certainly vibrant Shropshire's, um, but um, uh, just to give you a place, great place is um, is listed. That's really about place and communities. It's about what does the meaning and how can culture in all its forms, uh, how can uh, people say something meaningful, important, uh, pro and contra about where they live and so on. Uh, children and young people, unsurprisingly. Huge priority, of course. Um, uh, Herefordshire, like again many other local authorities, really struggling uh, with uh, its children's its uh, children's services. But uh, culture and cultural activists and cultural organisations can play a really unique part in supporting um, services for children. The creative economy. Now, I would probably say this coming from a, a, a media and a screen a screen industry background, but. The creative, the, the creative economy is bo booming, is growing. Um, again, in rather um, um, the rural, um, non-metropolitan centres, I think there has been a sense that the arts are something that we all do in our spare time, um, and that uh, you know really the real business might be uh, in where we are: agriculture, manufacturing, retail, and so on. But actually, um, uh, when we look at the scale and the growth of the industry, of the creative industry, it is huge. Uh, and we all have a responsibility to uh, support the talent and those younger talent that are looking for um, their uh, futures in, the, in that industry. Um, the uh, uh, cultural democracy, um, of course, um, is really about those underserved communities, everybody can is can have a right. Many years ago, I, before Royal Media, I, I used to work in South Shropshire and as a member of Pentabus uh, Theatre Company. And I remember going to shoot shows at village halls and so on, and coming away. And one of the questions always that we asked ourselves was what a great audience, but who wasn't there? Who wasn't in that village hall that day? Um, and we just trying to think how we address those, those gaps. Uh, and finally, um, cultural tourism, uh, which is again, and I think we've referred to it as um, it's a huge um, uh, uh, sector and investment opportunities. Uh, and we can, and the cultural sector uh, in its broadest sense, can really play um, a fantastic part. And we need to get that activated. All those young creatives, whether they be um, as musicians and band, in bands or whether they be graphic designers, really can play their part. They can invest, they can develop their skills, they can get some remuneration for their work, but they can also contribute, which many of us, certainly myself, can't contribute into that um, into that sector as well. So those are the priorities um, that we've set ourselves. Um, I will just move on there. So um, opportunities and ch challenges, I'll come back to cross-sector engagement. One of two uh, colleagues that were are here today, I know, were at a conference for Compacts um, some time ago in uh, in Coventry, and there was one of the presenters. Um, I won't say particularly who it was at this point, but she put a slide up, and uh, she and on the slide it had um, um, NHS service, um, you know. Uh, Police, police and blue light services, um, education, so the, the whole list, about 15, 16 of them. And she looked at us and she said, I, I expect you all, you think that um, in this conference, these are all people who, um, you know, we should be talking with. She waited for a moment. And then she said, no, she said, these are all people in my area that hate each other. <laughs> they won't talk to each other. Um, uh, and they're in competition with each other. Um, and that's how she started a very strong presentation about what there is the gain, the win-win, if we can actually get these collaborations working. 
easier said than done. Um, but uh, I think, as I say, bringing in some of those other services um, uh, around the table. And one way I think that um, the partnership encourages people uh, to um, deliver on that, to do that, is to work hard to bring those services together and then put examples as well as data, um, but uh, actually vi visual or um, uh, tangible examples, exemplars of the ways in which these services can work together. How do you work with the maternity ward in your hospital? How do you work um, with the justice system um, as a, an artist or as an arts organisation or cultural organisation and have those, um, you know, agenda free conversations? Uh, so we've just uh, at work, we've just initiated a series of what we call roundtable meetings where we're putting a lot of time into inviting 10, 15, 20 people around the table to really explore what the potential might be for certain art forms. Would, you know, how would a music programme, then uh, how could that link up with an environmental, with a wildlife trust, for example? All of those, those are the practical where it starts. And then when those conversations start, you can then begin to map out what would be really worth doing, and then you can go hunting together. Uh, and that then means you can then attract investment in that way. Uh, but it's absolutely through those partnerships and an insight also to current and shifting policy as well. Um, and I will finish just quickly there um, in just going back to the um, uh, to the Shire. One of the ambitions, again, uh, we haven't managed to achieve it yet, but is in effect a kind of directory of the skills and the creative and talent that are in the county. Um, uh, it can be, if it's well designed, it doesn't actually have to be too um, uh, too onerous in terms of uh, uh, administration because people have got a vested interest in maintaining those directories themselves. Around the country, there are some very good ones. Um, and uh, it, it just is such a shame that when we have you know, um, a manufacturer, uh, you know, um, a brewery or whatever, and they're looking to put out, you know, new comms or raise their, their um, profile in terms of the county, you will find then people being brought in from the southeast or from you know, northwest or wherever, when actually just around the corner, there are some really great talent. Um, and I think just supporting and, and, and being a, a broker in that way that can really help um and uh yeah i mean find i i mean i, I just I, I i did just touch on on this importance as well of that some compacts are struggling with to what extent should we be uh research and development and strategy and informing um policy and trying to suggest improvements to services or should we actually be project delivery delivering projects or both and to and in, the, in many ways uh, the partnership has experience of doing both so we delivered uh, Herefordshire's great place I think we were close in the early days we were um, a bit more involved with Shropshire that looked like there was going to be a partnership between Herefordshire and Shropshire uh, and I think at the time of um, the program the great place program to be led by Ironbridge um, and uh, my colleagues and um, local authorities and so on actually um, uh, really wanted to go just with Herefordshire. It's quite a sort of insular move there, I thought. And in fact, it was successful. But it did bring, bring in £600,000 or so, um, and, uh, and, and very importantly. But uh, on the other hand, aside from then delivery of projects, I think um, certain um, pieces of research are really important. I have um, one here, which, as I said, was just points out some of the cultural organisations um, nine ways to uh, supercharge Herefordshire, um, in-depth studies of certain businesses uh, that are um, uh, really bringing uh, uh, bringing um, uh, business and, and creating opportunities for young talent. And the other one um, that uh, we've uh, con concluded a little while ago is called uh, Developing Cultural Spaces and Places in Hereford City. And the debate there was really um, was really important at that time. It was just before the um, leveling up and the towns fund 
uh, investment came along, um, which was really to do with should we try and develop, Her this was just Hereford, uh, a cultural quarter, sounded a bit grand for a city of 60,000 people, um, or should we have, uh, um, in effect, as a wayfinding strategy where people could arrive at the bus station or arrive arrive at the train station and find their way here or to the theatre or, or whatever. Um, still hasn't quite settled that yet, but the cultural partnership is very much of a voice in where that goes and working closely, in this case, with the city, with the city council and the, sorry, and the county council. Um, so I think if um, there is, um, you know, there is potential to continue to do this really um, focused research uh, and development, Again, great opportunity for young researchers um, and diverse communities to contribute to this kind of work. And then also between the, the sectors to collaborate on really stand out inward investment um, and then to um, uh, demonstrate that working. I would also include within that sort of that looking at sustainability. So those projects trying to include um, training people in either in their own setting up their own enterprises and business or indeed in terms of uh, attracting and managing grant aid rather than always the one organization doing it to, you know uh, for others i'll stop there um thanks for that. thank you very much so we've got a bit of time now if there's any questions for nick about what they've done in Herefordshire, how it's worked, what what they've learned from that. So, are there any questions to Nick about what they've done in Herefordshire? Yeah, I'm just really interested in the young people and mm. how have you managed to actually get young people actually involved in the arts? To yes. So, you that it doesn't end. I'm just looking around here. I mean, there are lots of young people, but you know, the danger is that you know, it's very much left yes. to, to a certain demographic. So, um, Yes, indeed. And um, and obviously we have um, in some areas, not necessarily here, but other areas, remnants of youth work and street based work and all of that informal education that comes out. Um, but uh, again, the mainstay historically of much of that work has been around sports engagement or activities and so on. Um, from uh, really from from the creative sector and, and probably specific, specifically from some of the areas of work I'm, I'm primarily involved in, I would say voice. So being able to um, give uh, an opportunity for young people to uh, talk about what they want to talk about, but using then this amazing talent that we have around us, which might be uh, drama and theatre workers, it might be visual artists, and so on and so forth. Um, but Doing that requires that outreach work as well. And I have to say again, capacity. So at the moment, um, we've been running a programme, one or two people in the room might know about it because I know we've been doing some work in, in Shropshire as well, it's called um, POV, Points of View. Um, and uh, we've been running that for three years, um, really with support from Esme, uh, Esme Fairburn Foundation. Um, I'm pleased to say they've just reinvested for another three years in that. And that is really putting a couple of good people out there and not only just asking them for their views and writing it down, but saying, would you like to make a piece of whatever it is uh, about that, pro or contra? It could be anything. Um, it could be celebrating something. It could be talking about a relationship with a family, anything. Um, you create something out of that um, and then so long as you have that long tail, and this is so important with projects, rather than saying that's great, look, here was a, it was a podcast or here's a, a video or a, a, a you know a improvisation from that. This is what we would what we would then do is invite those young people to a meeting perhaps like this, or even more specifically to um, um, policy meetings or service meetings, uh, safeguarding panels, for instance. Um, uh, and young people, we would support them and train them not only to show their work, whatever it was, in whatever medium it was, but then they would say, um, when we go away this morning, what will you say when you get back to your team? What will you say about this? 
and people will come in and say, well, we need to listen to more young people. So, and then the last thing they will say before they leave the room is if we come back in six months time, could you give us an idea of what would have changed in your service? And uh, uh, my experience of, of that in some cases uh, to great um, um, generosity and support for those young people, they've allowed those meetings to be filmed. And that that film then becomes a film of recording. And I think it is really, so we've also been looking at citizens assemblies, but now younger people, citizens assemblies, where well managed, meet the decision makers, meet the influencers, and talk, but through your creative medium. And I think this is where, you know, arts and culture has such an effect. I would say, of course, that the new technology and creative technology and digital um, has huge, huge opportunities. Thank you. Okay. Oh, sorry, one more question. Sorry, yes, go yes, yes. In the new tourism. Yes. Um, that's right, it is. Well, I mean, it's settled, it's there, uh, and it's happening. Um, I won't go into the minutiae of the politics of that um, in terms of now whether, but it, but it, uh, it's recognised that it's very important. Again, I think the um, the bringing the um, you know you can see from round oh, not, not the membership there, but you can see that in fact you've got the national trust around the table, um, you've got the festival sector around the table, you know, um, and then you've got the arts and so on. Um, it's bringing those together um, and saying what more can can we do? Um, I think also for her, from Hereford's point of view, Hereford isn't doing too badly um, in terms of the county, its, uh, its landscape value and so on. Hereford City struggles uh, and, the, and there is a, a lot, very live debate going on at the moment there as well. The other live debates, of course, are where the demise of the LEPs and where that uh, is going. Um, and of course, in Herefordshire, and all local authorities, they may have a change of um, leadership uh, and uh, the, the partnership is can ride that, it's, it's, it's to ride that and now, and so uh, one of our tasks and tomorrow morning it's on our agenda is that we have now a new, uh, a new leadership, um, a, a new, a new um, uh, body that is now responsible for this because this similar to Vibrant Shropshire or the the strategy here was adopted, but we are now saying, how do you as a council interpret these priorities and what is your, where are your, your um, you know, priorities and so on and how can we work together? And you can't assume that it was as it was four or five months ago, I mean, a very different leadership. So I think that is another value why we should be independent and also working, um, working together um, because it isn't subject to these sort of changes. And I can keep in touch. I can, to can keep in touch with uh, with Tories now. All right, if we can just uh, thank the. And um, finally, our last big meeting, and um, Alice speak. I'll come back up to talk about some of the practicalities on this point on. Fabulous. Thank you very much, everyone, and thank you, Nick, for your presentation. It was great. Yes. Don't worry. Have been introduced. Sorry. Yes. Yes. So, uh, that's fine. I'll do it. Okay, I'll do. So I'm Alice Machin. I'm the Cultural Compact Officer. Do you? Yeah. Oh yeah. Cool. <laughs> no. Computers. No. Technical difficulties. There you go. I'm on the screen as well. OK, so I'm Alice Mitch and I'm the Cultural Compact Officer for Vibrant Shropshire. I joined the team in July, so I'm relatively new still. Um, and I've had a very busy few months since starting developing the Cultural Compact and overseeing many projects. Um, so over the past few months, it's we've been very busy working on several work streams to get Vibrant Shropshire up and running and begin delivering on our priorities and the Vibrant Shropshire Cultural Strategy. So recently we have begun a Vibrant Shropshire newsletter and a website and we've still these are still relatively new we've just started them recently um 
but hopefully this will be the main way that we communicate with you and share all of our projects and upcoming events and things like that. So the website, it's important to point out that this web page is for the industry rather than for the general public. We want to talk to industry members about what they want from their website about the cultural sector in Shropshire. Um, so it's going to be the space where we share funding information, internal and external training opportunities, examples of key policy documents, as well as industry news for Shropshire. It's still in its early stages, like I say. We hope to add more content to it on a regular basis. But as I say, we want this web page to work for you. We'd be keen to know what industry information you are looking for or what support you feel the industry is missing in Shropshire. Our aim is to support you to deliver cultural events and activities that increase the county's health, well-being, mm -hmm. economic resilience, sustainability and local pride. So our regular newsletters are our main form of communication. These newsletters will be sent to our partners and wider network to provide information about funding opportunities, events and projects. Anyone interested in signing up to our newsletter can do so at our web page and on the, Shropshire, on the Shropshire Council website, sorry, and by becoming a vibrant Shropshire partner that automatically signs you up for our newsletters so we can keep you informed with all our regular updates and things like that. So, so one of the things that we are sharing in these newsletters and has already start, been set up on the website is our partnership pack. To have access to our programmes and benefits like our funding, we want people to become partners of Vibrant Shropshire so we can work together, make Shropshire's cultural sector more connected and properly target the sector's needs. Partners will have access to free training events that are designed to upskill the se sector and deliver on our priorities. They will also receive regular newsletters, like I say, to update them with industry news and be a part of projects. Do, do, do. Being a partner means the chance to be involved in developing exciting, innovative, innovative that's a tricky word, projects by joining our working groups and helping Shropshire's cultural sector become better connected. To become a partner, you can join online. There's, it's completely free to join and there's just a simple form that you can fill out on there. Uh, we just ask you some for some basic information and we just we want to know what you want to get out of being a vibrant Shropshire partner. So what how we can help each other. The best way for you to benefit is to play an active role. Um, and hold on, I've lost my train of thought here. The best way for you to benefit and help culture make a difference in your community is to play an active part in it. We appreciate that everyone is working at capacity, but we would love for you to be as actively involved as you can be in our projects and initiatives. Share your knowledge and skills with the network and be part of the catalyst for change. Those part through this partnership, we hope that we will all help culture to change lives and develop the county's health, well-being, environmental sustainability, economy and skills. OK. Another way in which we hope to achieve this is through our brand new grant scheme. So this is what I'm sure a lot of you are quite interested in. This grant scheme is funded by the UK government through the UK Shared Prosperity Fund and administered by the Shropshire Council Economic Growth Team. So a total fund of £100,000 has been secured and will be distributed over the next two years. Applicants can apply for a grant of between £1,000 and £5,000 for cultural revenue projects between now and the 11th of December. A second round of this funding will be available in March 2024. So Vibrant Structure is looking to fund cultural events from exhibitions, workshops, festivals, sporting activities, professional development opportunities and more. A list of acceptable activities is available in the funding guidelines. It's an extensive list, it's quite long but it's not exclusive and we're always keen to support new ideas. However, all applications must be for cultural revenue projects that will be de delivered by November 2024 next year. In order to be eligible for funding, there's a few more eligibility criteria. You must be a vibrant Shropshire partner, like I mentioned earlier. You must operate in or deliver your project in Shropshire. So this is the unitary area and it doesn't include Telford, unfortunately. You must be an organisation or group with a constitution or a similar governance framework and you, your activity must be related to culture. That's really important. And you must meet our funding priorities. So all applicants must meet our main funding priority, which is overcoming barriers to participation in culture. Particularly for young people, old people at risk, isolated rural communities, the SEND community, financially disadvantaged members of the community as well as others with protected characteristics. 
all projects must be accessible, they must be inclusive and support inclusion, social inclusion. So all applicants, like I say, must meet this priority and show that their project is accessible, inclusive, blah, blah, blah. The applicants must then at least address at least one of our other priorities so Paul went into a bit more detail about these earlier. They're the same as our standard priorities for the cultural compact. So they cover cover health and well-being, job opportunities, engaging children and young people in cultural activities, environmental sustainability and culture, and financial resilience. So we're really looking for you to um your application to focus on that main priority of overcoming barriers to participation, as well as one of those other priorities. Specific details about these priorities are also available in the funding guidelines, which you can find online on that web page I showed you first. Applicants must meet at least one of these priorities or our main priority to be at, in order to be eligible for the funding, which is really important. That being said, it's a competitive process and not all applications will be successful. Grants will be made to the applications that demonstrate the closest alignment with the priorities and criteria. So applications are now open and will close on Monday the 11th of December at 12 p.m. Successful applicants will be notified in January 2024 when they'll also receive official offer letter and funding terms and conditions. For further details on the funding, to fill out an application or to view an example of the funding contract, you can visit our web page on the Shropshire Council website by searching Vibrant Shropshire Cultural Compact. Or oh, there's a lovely QR code. Hang on, let's take advantage of that. It will take you straight to the website. So also on the funding, we're going to be running a series of sort of meet the funder surgeries. So we've got one next Wednesday, Wednesday the 22nd of November at three o'clock. This is an opportunity for anyone that wants to, to come along onto a Teams call and ask any questions they might have about the funding. So if there's anything either you don't, you don't want to ask now or you forget about and you think later, or actually I want to ask that, come along to that. So that's at three o'clock, Wednesday the 22nd of November on Teams. Let me know if you want to come. I've got the link and I can send it to you. OK, alongside the funding. We are running a series of workshops which are funded by Arts Council England. All partners are encouraged to attend these workshops, which will take place over the course of the next two years and will help to upskill the sector and our priorities. Our first workshop will be on December the 5th and will be on overcoming barriers to participation in culture, our main priority. And we'll be led by two of our board members, Zoe Partington and Hannah Pryor, who've got industry and lived experience in this area. Respectively, Zoe works as an international equality advisor and Hannah Pryor works as creative director of Ignition. This workshop will be online and anyone interested in joining can do so on the workshop and network events page of our website. You must be a partner to take part in our workshops. That's really important. So then we've got another workshop coming up in January on the 18th, and this will cover creative health, also targeting one of our funding priorities. This will be led by Jane Hurst from the National Centre for Creative Health, who's at the back of the room, and she's available if anyone wants to talk to her about creative health and about the National Centre for Creative Health and what they do. It will also contain a practical element provided by Vibrant Shropshire board member, Joseph Schneider. The workshop will cover the benefits of creative health, the theory behind it, and how organisations can get involved. This work, this workshop will take place in person, therefore, at the University of Central Shrewsbury, in fact, just here, and bookings for the workshop will be available in December. So over the next year, we plan to do several other workshops and intend to offer a mixture of in-person and online for these. In spring next year, we will have workshops on working with volunteers, as well as governance policies and procedures. Both of these will be run by the Shropshire Infrastructure Partnership, who are here this evening in the corner. There's Duncan. Stop you in the corner. Thank you. <laughs> Please do talk to them. They're a great resource. Um, so, yeah, so this, as well as these, we're also going to be looking at running later in the year workshops on environmental sustainable working practices in culture and financial resilience. Details of these workshops will be available in our newsletters as the weeks and months go on and on our web page. OK, 
So I've mentioned that Jane and Duncan and Fiona, of course, is here as well from Community Resource. So please do talk to them. They're brilliant partners of ours. And I've got lots of ways that they can help the cultural sector in Shropshire. But we also have Fran from Shropshire Voluntary and Community Sector Assembly here. So hi, Fran, there you are. <laughs> Shropshire Council and Shropshire VCSA are working with key partners to launch a civic crowdfunding platform, Crowdfund Shropshire. The UK SBF Communities and Place Funds will form a starting part of small grants, which will be matched with public donations. Community groups will be able to pitch ideas online using Space Hive, a tried and tested platform, within a framework of strategic objectives. On average, for every one pound of public funding, three pound is raised in public donations. This generates more inf information on the issues that are really important to people in Shropshire. The approach is shown to strengthen community cohesion and resilience, build capacity and skills among the community and improve the health and well-being of participants. We know how difficult it has become for small groups to access funding opportunities. Opportunities that are so often pitched at large organisations with expert bid writers. By making people aware of the ambitions of our local communities and what communities need, we can encourage local giving and build the crowd. Support from individuals, businesses, funding bodies and many, many more. So the deadline for the funding for the crowdfund is the 29th of November with another round to come in spring. As I said, Fran is here. If you've got any questions about that funding as well, that's a really great scheme that they've set up. So do talk to her. Do you want to wave, Fran, so we can see there she is. <laughs> OK, so over the next couple of months, we look forward to developing, de developing our partnership network further. Reading your funding applications, setting up further workshops and working groups and helping to deliver on the vibrant Shropshire cultural strategy. If you have any questions about our projects or would like to speak to myself or any of the board members, please do. If you've got any immediate questions now, I think we have time for questions. Yeah, yeah. And I might hand over to Paul to sort of wrap up everything, if not. OK, thank you. Thank you. Um, the floor is so squeaky in here, there's no way you can be <laughs> But I mean, if anyone does need to leave, then that's that box is fine. Yep, it's the back of the floor. Could you ask me to stop in the phone look? You can actually see that. Um, because we've been following that monitor. Um, but the entire region's. It's because we're filming it as well, and the camera, the camera frame is very small. So the all of the signing is on film and will be available after tonight's event as well. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, something as well. So what I'm hoping to do as part of this strategy is to bring together the community to actually have a network with each other and yeah. help each other. Yeah. There's, there's a huge opportunity in the room, I suspect, for each of us to be able to, if we could, have some networking opportunities to be yes. able to help each other without funding. We yeah, can, we can get performance spaces. Yes, yeah. we can want spaces. The workshops are great. The yeah, the team are great. But I think there's probably a lot of things in the room that people actually wanted to see. Yeah, and actually, the team and cultural space. Absolutely. Oh, well, well, it's the guy from the workshop, you know, we were talking about round table discussions and bringing small groups of people together where you can think about what's the trouble you've had, the challenges you want to overcome, and then go and have a together. That though, though it's, it's facilitating that to so providing a space or providing a day yeah. where people can come together, those simple things that don't cost anything would be really impactful. Yeah, some, uh, of, sorry, go on. some of the events that we want to do in the future, obviously we're still at really early days with all of this, but we want to do more networking events so you mm -hmm. can all come together and get to know one another and make the cultural sector instructor more connected. I think it's more than a network event, it's something yeah. that's offering or a problem yeah. or a challenge and then we all come around and talk about it. Absolutely. It's more, so it's all it, 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 with an outcome in mind. Yeah. You know, having some of them. Yeah, so I mentioned our working group. So as part of the cultural compact, we're setting up working groups based on our priorities and other um topics and things. And so we're looking for people to join those. Again, it's still really early days for it all, but we're looking for people to join those to come together and talk about a specific topic as well. Great. And this will all be in our newsletters, and that's how we'll sort of communicate with you about this. Yep, I'm just going to mention about the survey to pick up on site that people can do that. Yes, okay, so yeah, on in our newsletters and on the web page at the moment, there's a survey 
asking people what they really want out to want out of this service out of the cultural compact so whether it is training whether it is networking whether it is you want to play more of an active role and be a part of the conversation so that's on the website and it's on a newsletter so if you sign up to those okay how can people find out that it's on your website or from your how are you um reaching out to artists and people who are not privileged enough to have a laptop yeah don't the internet. Uh, yep. what is your kind of way of how you that's a really good question and it's something you really need to consider further um but i say that tonight because i just happened to meet somebody who okay and my job is fantastic yeah but you sort of seem to be sitting on it in a very corporate way. And yeah, OK, that's really good feedback. But, but how are you doing? How are you getting there? Do you want to pick up on that? Yeah, go on. Um, at the moment, our database is based on what we've the previous um, network across Telford and Shropshire. And what we're asking now is all of our partners to be a part of that sort of so viral what, market. What, what network was part of Telford? Yeah, originally it was called the Shropshire Consortium. Help me out, Annabelle. Thank you. Well, that, but also the Consortium. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Mainly based at um, yeah. And what we're hoping is that in this true spirit of partnership, everyone will take this on board and start spreading the word within each of their own communities, so whether they are visual artists and um, we've got representation on the board from visual artists and we're hoping that they will spread the word to that community. And likewise, as the partnership grows, everyone can help to bats with some type of viral marketing. And I, I use the word viral not just through in terms of online, but just through spoken word yeah, and meeting yeah, yeah. in the pub saying, Are you going to be we heard of this one? Mm -hmm. like I, I think it's a wonderful thing to do, but that's your key to it, to make it work. Yeah. But it can't be. It just go to the people at the top. Mm -hmm. You know, that's like, you know, we've got people together and sort of say, what do the public want? Ask the public, see what they want. So, I mean, that seems to be what, you know, a couple. We'll also be yeah. using traditional marketing and marketing communication yeah. techniques, you know, using the press, using posters, or all, all usual tactics within the resources that we have. Yeah, let's do that. The press is an interesting one. Do you think people read really deeply? Yeah. Potentially, if they've got access to online, yeah. they, all the rest tends to have a website presence mm -hmm. as well. We've got some members, I think. Where's Katie? Katie in the room, store she does this. The my show is free. There's, there's a variety of different partners that we've got who are going to help us on that. Um, Pete, where's Pete? Pete's in the room somewhere. Pete's helping us with some of our communications. Uh, okay. So there's a, a variety of different people. But again, it will be the need and support of everyone to get to places that, that we don't have access to. And I mean, very aware. Um, that we don't know all the groups that are out there. The more people I talk to, I suddenly find out that there's a network of, of creative artists. There's the yeah. visual arts platform, the visual arts and the else, and they're all coming out the woodwork. So please, if you are aware of anyone, spread the word. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, the gentleman who you heard, I noticed that one of his partners was over the cathedral. Um, I work for the kind of non-religious side of Shrewsbury Unitarian Church. And I just wanted to put a word in for churches in Shropshire. So you will find that the major churches in Shrewsbury, for example, hold an abundance of um, musical events. Mm -hmm. And they fit all the criteria for well-being, creative arts, and they're ready-made spaces. And I think sometimes that's you know, having to move away from the kind of religious time use the venues more as um, commercial cultural buildings. Community building, that's what I'm trying to say. Is I think it would be really good to engage with that sector as well. Yeah. We've got a new part of someone who's only contact me last week who's doing exactly as you suggest, is putting on a variety of, uh, of cultural activities specifically in play and field. So it's a new organisation that he's trying to set up. To oh, do. sorry. John, do, can you just, I missed that last week. So doing a number of cultural activities in play and field. Okay, can we have a chat about the event? Yeah, Thank you. Okay, any. Uh, question? Yeah, that's just to clarify. I mean, as you went through that presentation, yeah. obviously there's a number of criteria. Yes. Organisations was a key one, and there's a determination of organisations yes. to, to lots of different uh, variables to that. Um, what is the specific criteria of an organisation? An organisation would expect to have some sort of government. Yes, yeah, like government framework in place. Bank. And a bank account. Bank account. If you're applying for funding, then you'd have to have a bank account. Sure. And then you'd have to have a bank account. Yeah, if you have a look at the funding guidelines on the website, 
it goes into quite a lot more detail about those, that eligibility. We had quite a lengthy discussion at the board about this, and we didn't want to put people off, but in the same way, we have to have some guidelines yeah. in order to, as it's public and friendly, we have to have certain guidelines to ensure that they're from the appropriate organisations. Yeah, at the moment, how are you linking with the, the arts office for the tenants? At the moment, I am the arts office. <laughs> Between Alice, I don't know if you remember Alexa, Alexa Pugh, she's been seconded now into the um, Hog Day Activities and Foods programme until the end of 2024. Um, and in the meantime, her role is being taken on by myself. And in some way, this is a replacement that some of the work that, that, that Alexa would have been doing and very subsequently to Alexa is being picked up through the work of Alice and myself. 